Hi everyone, my name is Amber Thomas and I'm alongside Tim Maurer for the first ever episode of the Centennial Conference Corner. Each and every week we'll get the chance to highlight a different member of the conference from student athlete to administrator. And what better way to kick it off than with this duo right here. How are you feeling today, Tim? I am great, ready to go. Thanks for uh, the honor of being one of the first guests on this Centennial Conference Corner, Amber. I appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> so you have a lot of experience in the conference, starting from John Hopkins and Franklin and Marshall at the institution level. And now you're at the conference since 2018. Um, what would you say makes the Centennial Conference so special? Wow, the, the Centennial Conference is such a great conference to be a part of. As you mentioned, I, I have uh, a little bit of a history in the conference. It's where I got my start working at Johns Hopkins at, and the sports information department as an intern there and, and learned so much. And then had my first full-time opportunity at Franklin and Marshall College uh, as the assistant sports information director before leaving to go to another conference uh, to work in their conference office and get some experience there. And Everything came back full circle a couple years ago, and I returned to the conference as the assistant executive director, and it's just a great place to work. It's really a destination conference that from administrators to coaches to everyone who works in the conference, it, it, it's really a, a place where you see them, them come and, and stay for a long period of time. These are um, highly desirable institutions to be a part of and to attend for our student athletes as well. The, the mix of academics and athletics, uh, just the highest quality that you could have, uh, not only regionally, but, but nationally. And um, we just have such talented student athletes um, that we get to get to promote and, and work with and um, great administrators that, that have really good camaraderie and get along really well. And so it's just an exciting place to, to, to work at and be a part of. Yeah. So if we have anyone out there watching who really has aspirations and dreams of working in sports, what advice would you give them? Yeah, I mean, there, there is, there's a lot of opportunities out there in sports. It's very competitive, though. So what I would say to anyone, you know, young adults, college students, you know, anyone who's interested in working in the sports industry is gain as much experience as possible. Uh, you know, a degree is, is great. Um, but and that only gets you so far in sports industry. People want to see you have hands-on experience. And that could be, you know, if you're a high school or college student, that could be volunteering at sporting events. Uh, that could be, um, you know, taking part in things in your local community, um, traveling to other events in, in the area, just being willing to, to do anything um, is definitely one of the keys in showing that you have that work ethic because working in sports a, a lot of times is very long hours um, you're, you're working evenings, you're working weekends. Um, and then the other thing I would say is develop some sort of skill that's going to help you break into the industry. Uh, you know, a lot of people look at the job of a commissioner at the division three level or someone like Roger Goodell in the NFL. And they say, Ooh, I want that job, but it takes a long time to work yourself up to that. So make sure that you develop some sort of skill that's going to allow you to break into one of the entry level or middle level positions in the industry that could be, um, for myself, it was communications, writing skills, video skills, graphic design. For someone else, it might be, uh, it might be programming and running championships. Um, for other people, it might be something completely different, compliance work or public speaking. So figure out what your niche is, develop those skills, and then that you're going to eventually be able to work your way up in the industry. But don't think that you're getting the, uh, the best job right away, right off the bat. It takes a lot of hard work and, and time to, to work your way up the ladder. That's some really great advice. I think I'm going to flip the script on you now a little bit. Okay. <laughs> you are the first ever coordinator of sports administration and championships with the Centennial Conference. That's a mouthful for me to get out there, but um, you've been here for just about a month now. Um, can you give us just an overview of your educational and professional history and, and how that led you to the Centennial Conference? I was a student athlete, track and field athlete, was really interested in sports information uh, the sports information director at Capital University, Capital University took me under his wing, uh, really gave me an overview of what sports information was, because I think a lot of people don't understand exactly what all goes into it. And from there, 
I kind of knew that sports was for me. So graduated a year early in 2017 and then became the assistant director of sports information at Hiram College and was there for three years, which was amazing. Got my master's in May of 2020. And there I also served as the uh, program assistant in the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, which was a really cool opportunity, especially in a time like this, to be able to kind of see where diversity and inclusion in sports kind of mix. So it was a great opportunity. Now I'm here. And, and it's great to have you. It's obviously odd times that you're starting. We're used to the fall and this time of year being really busy with jam-packed with, with a lot of sporting events to cover. And we're having to get a little bit creative with um, different types of content that we put out and, um, you know, how we're engaging our, our membership. But um, what, what is it about college athletics and Division three specifically that uh, appeals to you to, for you to pursue your professional career in this area? I think it's because I'm a product of Division three. I really got that experience where I just felt like I could have it all from the leadership opportunities that I got to the ability to be able to play sports longer than I thought I would be able to. I think it's truly where I found my purpose and I truly have like a love and passion for seeing student athletes develop. And honestly, Division Three just, just does it for me. I think we'll switch it over to some this or that questions. Are you ready? I think so, I guess so, I guess I have to be. Nothing intense. <laughs> so dogs or cats? Dogs. I would have to say dogs. My, my wife probably, would, if she heard me say cats, it would, it would not be good for me. Um, <laughs> now I'll say this, cats, it's, it's less work. You know, it's less work taking care of a cat. They're a little more independent. So that is a bonus. But just the, the love of dogs um, that they show you and uh, their personalities, I, I would have to go dogs. True. So I know that you play both, but would you prefer tennis or golf? I think in my now adult years, now that I'm, I'm getting older, I, I certainly prefer golf. I, I love the challenge of golf. I did play tennis in college, but uh, I joke with people that I'm retired from tennis and uh, I've moved on to golf, but, but both are great lifetime sports and um, they, they're both very enjoyable, but golf is definitely my go-to nowadays. Winter or summer? I have to go with summer again, again, because... Uh, you know, the, my wife loves the summer. I, 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 and she would, she would not be happy if I, uh, <laughs> if I said winter, but I, I like all the seasons, actually. I, I like that. I like living in this area in Pennsylvania and the mid Atlantic where we have every single season and none of them are too harsh. Um, but you know, the summer, summer's just, you get those summer vibes and you can do more things outside. I, I'm a summer guy. So this one is a tough one, you know, it's a lot of riding on this one. Any other conference or the Centennial Conference? Ooh. Centennial okay. Conference, of course. Okay. Is it my turn to rapid fire to you? Yes, it is. All right. Favorite social media platform? Ooh, I would have to say Instagram, especially since Instagram has evolved into TikTok, Snapchat, and so many other things. <laughs> For sure. They, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. Uh, if you had a million dollars, how would you spend it? Ooh, if I had a million. I really want to create a nonprofit organization. So some of that money will go into helping build that up. And then I think I will have to spend the rest with developing Cleveland because I always represent home. I actually have dogs or cats as one of my questions as well. So Ooh. how about it? I'm allergic to cats, so I won't say cats. It's definitely dogs for me, but I am afraid of big dogs, so it would have to be a dog that could fit in a purse or a stroller. We have a mini poodle in our house. His name is Miko. He's about 18 pounds. He would be perfect for you. Yes. Not that maybe, I'm giving Maybe away. you'll let me dog sit then. <laughs> definitely have that arranged. <laughs> What's something that you wish you were good at, but you're not? I would love the ability to sing, but I think that God knew that if I had the ability to sing, I would never stop. So he spared my parents, but I would love to be able to. 
<laughs> and then finally, what's your favorite Disney movie? Ooh, that's a tough one. Favorite Disney movie. I would have to say Moana. I actually went to go see it as soon as it came out in theaters. And people were like, are you serious? That's a children's movie. But it had me moved to tears. So I think it's a great movie. Oh, you got to love Disney movies. <laughs> and all of them are so good. Yeah, They yeah. are. That was a tough one. <laughs> Sorry, I, I wasn't trying to stump you there. But uh, <laughs> Thank you all so much for, uh, for watching our, our first ever Centennial Conference Corner video. Amber, thank you for setting this up and welcome to this uh, Centennial Conference. Uh, we're excited to, to have you here working with us and uh, we look forward to more of these interviews in future weeks. Thanks.